Hello guys and gals, Buffalo here. Welcome back to the range. Today I'm going to be taking a look at this defensive load for the 410 shotgun. I'm going to shoot it into this clear ballistics gel block. This is Remington Ultimate Defense Buckshot. It is a 3 inch shot shell, chambered for 410 bore of course, rated at 1125 feet per second, contains five 36 caliber pellets. You can see they've got a little cutaway picture here. It shows how the pellets stack single file inside the shot shell. And it is triple op buck. Now, I have seen this stuff tested and shot into gel blocks from some of the 45 caliber handguns that also shoot 410 shot shells. But I don't see a lot of uh, videos out there of tests of this round out of an actual shotgun. And it's, it's meant for your shotgun. It says maximize your shotgun's effectiveness. So it's not particularly a handgun load, though a lot of people use it for that. There's nothing wrong with that. But I wanted to test it out of a shotgun. This is the shotgun I'm gonna to use today. This is my Mossberg Model 500 in Bottomland Camouflage. Has a 24 inch barrel, and I have a cylinder bore choke tube installed. So the first thing we need to do is to hop over to the chronograph and see what kind of velocities we're getting out of this 24 inch barrel. So I fired five shots over the chronograph and got an average velocity of 1,090 feet per second with a standard deviation of nine. All right, I made my own cutaway shot shell here so we can get a better look at it. And sometimes it's not good just to go by the picture on the box. If you've ever been through a drive-thru, you, you know they make that food look glorious on the drive-thru sign, but it never lives up to what you actually get. So I wanted to take a look at what we were actually getting here. And to their credit, that picture does look like what I cut open here. So we've got five pellets. And I should also mention that Remington does offer this load in a two and a half inch shot shell, and it only has four pellets. But you do get a little boost in velocity. So there's a trade-off there for that. But we've got five pellets. We'll pop this one on the end out. It looks bigger than the rest because it's actually sitting up on the crimp there. So it's a little closer to the camera than the rest of them. They're all the same size. I already checked them. But I'm going to check one on camera here for you guys. You can see 0.357 diameter. And on the scale, one pellet weighs about 65.7 grains. All five pellets combined come in at 328 and a half grains. And if you factor in the mean velocity that I got out of my shotgun of 1,090 feet per second, that gives us about 867 foot-pounds of energy. So with all that being said, it's time to shoot the block. I'm gonna take it over here and get it set up. I've actually got two of these. I wanna set up end to end just in case it penetrates all the way through one, they're 16 inches each. And I've never shot this stuff into one of these blocks before, so I don't know how far it's gonna go. So I'm gonna set two blocks up end to end. Let's go ahead and shoot this thing. So here's a look at those gel blocks. I've got two set up here back to back to give me plenty of room to catch everything. Now I'm just gonna shoot the block bare. I'm not gonna use any barriers or anything. And I know I'll have to read through a hundred comments about why didn't I throw some blue jeans on it. But I do these tests for me just as much as I do YouTube. And I wanna be able to compare this with all the bare block gel tests that I've done in the past. Okay, so I shot that from five yards. This sunlight is very, very harsh today. Try to get this as best as possible, but as you can see, I put the payload 
right in the center of the block and I needed to do that because I knew that they would start spreading out. If I'd have hit the edge of the block, I wouldn't have caught them all and I still didn't catch them all. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. If we look at it from the side, there's where it went in. That's actually a wad. And then we've got one, two, three here in the first block, one in the second block, and we lost one. Once they hit the gel and they started to spread out, one veered out the left side of the block there. So we caught four pellets. The one that went into the second block made it to just a little over 20 inches probably closer to 21 inches of penetration, but it did bounce back and settled at about 20 inches. The three that stayed in the first block, looking at it through this clear gel, and that's one of the benefits of this clear gel like this, you can see everything really good. They're, they've all got flat sides. The only one that penetrated into the second block stayed nice and round. But these all have flat sides from either compressing against each other or sliding down the, the bore or something. But they've all flattened out. And they went about 14 and a half, 15 inches before they stopped. Okay, so I pulled everything out of the gel block. Here's this wad. It penetrated 9 or 10 inches into the gel block. And here's these pellets. They're, these flat ones are just, they're not even remotely sphere. This one's flat on two sides. But I was looking at this stuff, and this happened with the force of blasting the pellets down the bore, it, it flattened them out inside the bore because like this one, for instance, is flat on both sides, but this side is cylindrical almost. It's, you can tell that it rode the bore. Same with all of them, really. You can tell that one side of each of these pellets came up against the bore. And another clue was this little design here in this wad. That's got that little hole in the bottom of it. It's clearly visible on this pellet. So it was sitting in the wad here it was, the, it was the bottom pellet. Of course, we're missing one piece to the puzzle, but this one was on the bottom, and you can see how when it flattened out, the sides of it rode the bore and left those marks on the side of that pellet. And then, of course, the pellet on top of it. I had all these stacked up, but I can't do it and watch through the camera at the same time. But then this pellet on top of it would have also flattened out and so on and so forth. And then the, I'm guessing this lead pellet is the one that stayed round. It does have a small flat spot on it. They flattened out before they ever hit the gel block. They flattened out while they were in the bore. But I guess that's about all I've got to show you guys today. Thanks for watching. I always remember, if somebody asks you to give up a little of your freedom for the greater good, that freedom is the greater good, and I'll talk with y'all again soon.